Greetings, fellow Gorehounds, and welcome back to another Blood Splattered vlog. I'm the Horror Guru. And I'm Count Jackula. And we just got done watching Victor Crowley, the latest addition to the Hatchet franchise, which, yep. I, for the longest time, I thought Hatchet 3 was going to be the end. We weren't going to get a Hatchet 4 because I Adam Green just didn't seem like his heart was in it. Well, like, given that he had given the third movie over to another director, it felt like he was like, I'm done with this. Well, that was partially you know? because he, had, he was working on like three different projects at the time. Like he was doing like one of the seasons of Holliston and a bunch of other things. So he was like so busy, he couldn't direct it himself. So that's why he gave it up to, uh, I think it was uh, one of his uh, camera crew people. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, but uh, like the, the, the Hatchet franchise in general has always represented this great kind of return to form of the slasher well, yeah. movie well absolutely because they came out in in the in the mid 2000s uh, the, the 2000 to the 2010 yeah. when uh there was a resurgence in bloody horror movies they saw a whole bunch of filmmakers that came about uh, adam green being one of them and james wan being another mm -hmm. and alexander aja who were dubbed the splat pack because they brought splatter back to cinema and adam green's thing was the thing that he brought back the most was he brought back the mixture of blood boobs and comedy yep um so he really was bringing back that feeling of like the cheesy 80s slasher movie in a way that no one else was doing at the time yeah and he succeeded with hatchet and he succeeded with hatchet 2 and he succeeded further with hatchet 3 and now now we have hatchet 4 the meta reboot sequel that is absolutely a sequel but very much has that feeling of like poking fun of itself the whole time. yeah 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 it definitely feels like <laughs> We're starting over again, but yeah. it's definitely a continuation. And uh, I gotta say, I think this is probably my favorite so far. Oh god, yeah, yeah. It's probably like it pro probably one in one in this. Are yeah, right there it used to be Woo. one in two, and now it's one in this for me. Because oh was man, great. this this is so satisfied because like it's weird. It's weird. Hatchet three was only like what three four years ago. Yeah, wasn't yeah, that something long? Like, something like that. It was like two thousand thirteen, I think. Yeah, yeah. Wasn't that long? No. But this. When this movie, watching this movie, you feel like you're like, it's back! And yeah. you're like, wait a minute, it really hasn't been gone that long, <laughs> no. but it's back. And it's totally back. And apparently when he premiered it, he didn't tell anyone he had made a Hatchet sequel. They all thought it was going to be something else. So I can only imagine sitting here watching that movie and the moment the daddy has yeah, the opening yeah, scene. He's like, yeah, <laughs> fuck yeah! Oh um, my god. Like, oh no, dude! I wanna, I wanna, I wanna hug Adam Green. Oh, me too. I wanna kiss his feet. I won't be like, no, this was awesome. This was the best. The other thing is, I feel like you could tell he spent a lot of time on this one because, like, unlike the two sequels, which I love the two sequels for what they are. Oh yeah, they're fantastic. But unlike the two sequels, the logic of this one was way more sound. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like everything, everything held together just a little bit better because yeah. the sequel, they, they, you could tell the points where they were like. Look, I don't know how else we're going to get people back in this swamp. Let's just hang a lampshade <laughs> well, on it. Well, the, yeah. the, even, even three made fun of the fact that in two, the justification for them going back in the swamp was really flimsy. Yeah. Super flimsy. Whereas it's a lot stronger in this one. You, no, you, this one's super solid. You understand. Yeah. You understand exactly why they're going back. But you also understand that he really shouldn't. Yeah. It's <laughs> still a bad idea. And, and, and it, we're not, I'm not going to get into spoilers just yet. So I'm not going to tell you which character comes back from the previous movies, but... You, if you know the Hatchet franchise, you can figure it out. Yeah, yeah. There is a character who is always there, or rather, an actor yes. who is always there. And without him, and he does a great no... job in this movie. He does. He's he does. the lead He's in fantastic. this one. He wasn't yeah. the lead in any of the other ones. No, he's he does like a great side job character. In this. You know. So he finally gets like his own movie. Yes, and he does. Oh, he does man. a fantastic job. Yeah, well, and, and he's like he's kind of like the heart and soul of this franchise, like in reality. Yeah, because well when. When I first heard that the Victor Crowley was gonna be a movie, I'm like, "Dude, boy, better be in it, or that ain't right." Well, yeah, that ain't our... right. It's not a real sequel. It don't count. The, the, the thing is, is that I'm glad that they at least kept that because there were there's certain tropes that I associate with being a hatchet sequel mm. that this movie diverges from, but it still works. Yeah. Number one, uh, one of the one of the big first things that it does differently is that most hatchet movies they open up with a uh, a prologue that sets up like 
he's killing people or whatever, or Karen continues from the last movie or whatever. This one opens up with a prologue, but what it doesn't do is it doesn't have the industrial slash metal credit sequence yeah. that um, uh, the other three did. Yeah. Well, the other thing that this one didn't do, and you don't notice it's not there, which mm -hmm. tells you how good it is, it didn't give him a new power. No. Usually, fucking Victor Crowley gets a new superpower. In each one. And the other thing is that this one had some tits at the beginning, but not nearly as much as, like, the first two. No, not not <laughs> as we go on. Yeah. You know, basically, there's a pair of boobs in the beginning, and because it's got to be there. Yeah, it's, it's got to be there. You have to, tits and blood it's is this franchise. It's completely gratuitous. Over. It's completely fucking gratuitous. Yes. But probably... Dude, is the other gratuitous nudity shot? Is that a spoiler or not? Oh, we'll go into that. All we'll right, that all later. right. We'll go into that later. But there's not as much nudity as there is, like, in the first hatch. It's certainly, the first hatch still has the most nudity of all of them, in my opinion. Oh, well, yeah. Like, like that one That one had straight-up shots of, like, Mardi Gras and just tits everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Well like, <laughs> well, like, the only actress who doesn't take her top off is the main character in that mm -hmm. one. You know, oh, well, actually, she's not the main character in the first movie, but, like, She's the main character main in the subsequent character sequels. In the second and third one. Yeah, yeah. But here's the thing, like, like you don't you get side boob for her, because there mm -hmm. are shots of like her taking showers and stuff, but it's not like it's not like, oh, look at her sexy in the shower. It's usually her brooding in the showers. Like her... <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like when it's when it's just like Daniel Harris being like mm -hmm. hosed down yes, in the yes. second one. Just oh man. <laughs> Yeah, uh, but um, the, not supposed the, to be arousing so much as oh, geez, girl. Some of the stuff it does keep is that every Hatchet movie has a slew of people from um, past horror movies in the movie in little cameo roles. Yeah, um, like this movie has um, it has uh, Sleepaway Camp Girl Felissa Rose, Felissa Rose, who played Angela and played Angela. She's in this. Um, Tyler Main shows up at one point. Yeah, Tyler Main's in the movie. <laughs> He's in this at one point because he was in. He was in. Uh, he was Michael Myers in the Rob Zombie flicks. And and one one of like one of the one of the main cast is actually uh, the main character from John Dies at the End. Yes, and a couple other horror movies. <laughs> um, uh, and so like the, 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 it continues that trend, makes me real happy. Yeah, this one has a lot more. All the other movies in like would have like little background things that like alluded to other Adam Green works. Like yes. for example, in Hatchet Two, there is like a Jack Trop pro poster in the background alluding to one of his like horror shorts he yeah. did one year. Um, in this movie, there is probably the most like, um, what do you call them? In jokes uh, towards Adam Green's fan base and his podcast and stuff like that. Than any of his other movies, the because, dog, like 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 the fact that his dog's in this movie, <laughs> the fact that there is a boat in the movie named after his dog, yeah, there is a reference to his band Haddonfield, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, like the thing I loved about this movie um, is this. This to me, I feel like I don't know how to say it. I feel like Adam Green went the full trauma film more than any this. other sequel. This was a movie for fans. Oh yeah, this was this is not oh, yeah. not trying to get like non fans into the Hatchet movies. This is like you are a Hatchet fan if you're watching Victor Crowley, so you better be on board. <laughs> yeah, 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 you're on board already. It does it. a good job at the beginning catching everyone else up if they yeah, haven't yeah, watched so you're not ones. lost. Yeah, you know, but yeah, no, it's it's super for fans and. Uh, this is you know what this is not a jumping on point, but God damn it, everyone should watch it anyway. This was pro this of the sequels. This is the one that most matches the original's like comedy. Yes, because the original was just a flat out horror comedy, and like because really serious dramatic things happen in the sequels, they were funny, but not nearly as funny as the first one. Well, yeah. Whereas this one was one hundred percent as funny, and at times funnier than the first one. Yeah, to the point where this one felt like this is the Jason Lives of the franchise. It is. It is a Jason Lives of the franchise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it absolutely is. Like one of the things I was really, really glad about is that one of the uh, one of the stable of the Airy Scope um, actors who hasn't hadn't really been in a Hatchet movie, mm -hmm. uh, it, only a cameo was uh, Laura Ortiz. Oh yeah, yeah, she's yeah. a big part in this movie. Yeah, she shows up in a lot of uh, Adam Green stuff. She was one of the main characters in Holliston, his show, and she finally got a role in this movie. Yeah, who some of you may know if you don't know her from Adam Green stuff, she was Ruby in the Hills of Eyes remake. So she is yeah. another horror veteran showing up. Yeah, in these movies. <laughs> yeah, so that was really fucking great. I thought it was really funny that um, Felissa Rose plays a publicist yes. in this. Um, in this episode, episode, Damn, episode movie, whatever, <laughs> and fucking Wait, does, because each the... movie ends on like a cliffhanger leading into like the next one, it does feel like episodes of a show. It does, it does, it really does. <laughs> like the Hatchet and this series. one's no different. This one's no different. This one ends 
exactly the same way as all the others. Yes. And if you've seen the series up to this point, you you and know it. And each time they do you know it, it gets I mean. funnier and funnier. It does. <laughs> it does. I and I fucking love it because in each episode it ends right as the big splatter moment happens and then just fucking hard cut. Yeah. Yeah, just like ah! <laughs> credits. Yeah. Well, that's th- th- these movies have like excellent comedic timing in my opinion. And this this one this one was like this one though like it had oh, great man. comedic timing but it was also like so gratuitously all over the place it felt like a trauma movie like Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, like you're even looking at how to put it. The effects in this movie mm-hmm. are kind of shitty. Yeah. But you're looking at them and you go, no, they did that on purpose. They are embracing yeah. some of the shit. You're like, effects. no, it just looks like crap. No, just keep rolling. Keep fucking going in. Dude, that looks fake as shit. I don't care. Just fucking you, keep you going have moments in. where you have people getting like their arms ripped off and they're clearly wearing like thicker clothes than they would normally oh wear. Oh my god, so yeah. Hide yeah. their arms. <laughs> Yeah, and I love that because I'm just like, yeah, man, just do it. Just fucking do it. Is it in focus? Is it in a wide shot so you can see it in all its glory? Perfect. Perfect. It's yeah. funnier oh, that way. Oh, my God. No, it was. I I really feel like this was the funniest oh, of the fucking I, Hatchet movie. I was movies. laughing my ass off. I was fucking laughing my ass off. This movie is oh, God. super fun. And it makes me really excited because it, it definitely ends in a way that makes you go like, okay, there's going to be a Hatchet 5, right? Yeah, there's exactly. Be either Hatchet 5 or Victor Crowley 2, whatever you want to call it. Either one. <laughs> Either Either one. one. Like, I'll live with Victor Crowley, too, but I feel like it should be Hatchet 5 just so it's dumber. Well, yeah. Well, (laughs) well, well, here's what I want. This movie is gooder as shit. Oh, super gooder. Well, the Hatchet franchise is gooder, and this movie just takes it to a next gooder level, level, and that makes me really happy. Yeah. I really hope that he, like, just gets ridiculous if he makes more. Like, I really want him to do the thing where, like, okay, well, a lot of these horror franchises eventually go to space. No, I totally want Victor Crowley in space. (laughs) I I don't know what stupid excuse you'd have to Fucking, like, like, like it fucking, there's just like the, the whole thing's sitting on a UFO and it goes up into fucking space and now they're fighting aliens. I don't fucking care. I need to see Victor Crowley in space. I um, the other thing I will say is that even though this is a movie for fans, if you are a fan of splatter horror comedies, then you'll probably enjoy this movie regardless. Oh, yeah. Because this movie is the splatteriest. It is funny as fuck. Even yeah. if you don't get the in-jokes, there's enough non-in-jokes that are really great. Yeah, yeah. Especially <laughs> if you're one of those people who is like, you shut the fuck up. Jason Lives is the best. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Like I said, this is totally the Jason Lives of the franchise, where it just goes off the rails. <laughs> oh, my. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, oh my god. Um, uh, but uh, at this point, I want to get to the spoilers soon. So I am going to include an Amazon affiliate link to Victor Crowley, Victor Crowley. Hatchet 4, in the description below. Um, the movie is just coming out this week, so it might be a pre-order when you first see this, but it will eventually be buy yeah. options. Um, but definitely get yourself a copy Check of Victor Crowley. every day. Highly recommend this movie. Highly, highly, highly. And uh, with that said, uh, let us move on to the spoilers. <laughs> Okie dokie. So uh, what... I want to wh- say, yeah. say a few words. Okay. Too Hard the Franchise is, of course, Perry Shen. Perry Shen, yes. And not just because we share a last name. Yes. yes. <laughs> Perry Shen, who, if you recall from the original Hatchet franchise, he played the uh, the, the tour guide in the yeah, first movie. Yeah, he plays the tour guide in the first one. And then he plays the tour guide's brother in the second movie, returning to the swamp to try to find his brother. Yeah. And then in the third movie, he plays a paramedic who... He's someone completely unrelated. Completely unrelated, and they point out that, oh, like, t- like two of these victims look like you, and he's like, oh, yeah, all Asians look the same, huh? And they, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, but that medic from the third movie, if you remember from the third movie, lives at the end, and he is the main character of the fourth one. Yeah. It's ten years later, and he has basically been invited to do an interview at the swamp for, like, a million dollars. Yeah, but he doesn't want to go back to the swamp. But at this point, the swamp is safe. It's been a like yeah, a yeah. Tourist there's spot. a whole tourist attraction there. Because in the third movie, what they did to defeat Victor Crowley actually worked. Yep. Um. Uh. So he is the main character. He's invited to go back, and that prompts the whole movie. Yeah. Him him going back to the swamp triggers every uh, the series of events that ends up happening afterwards, and he does it a great job. He did. He did. It was it was kind of interesting. Like you would actually point out, hey, both Adam and, and Joe. Joe did movies that had Asian male leads. Yeah, yeah. 2017 was the year of both of them doing Asian male leads. Yeah. 
I was, I was okay name with and that. this. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like, and and Did it, I say 2007, 2017. Yeah, 2017. <laughs> yeah. yeah, whatever. But like, I was really glad because these are two very different characters. They're yeah. two very different characters. They don't feel like, ah, oh, we're just gonna put the stock no. fucking Asian guy in here. No. And you really get the feeling that in this movie, more than even the third one, he really gave this guy a personality. Like, oh, in the th yeah. In the third definitely. one, he was there, and and Perry Shen does a great job, but you don't really know who he is as a person in that movie, whereas yeah. you really get to know him in this one. Yeah, yeah. He's, you he, he really, it really got across the, I, just a guy who's, Look, he's kind of trying. Yeah, he's trying to make a buck, but God damn it, what else is he supposed to fucking do? All I'm saying point? is that if you just went through what what he went through in Hatchet Three, but you can make like millions of dollars from it, fine, fine. Yeah, you're you're living with PTSD your whole fucking life, and you're yeah, yeah, with, might as well get paid. You might get as well paid. get paid for that. Like, I can't blame him for that. No, no, there no. There are characters who call him out on that in this movie, and I'm like, fuck you. Like, yeah. <laughs> If you went through what he went through, you'd do the same thing. Jesus yeah, yeah, yeah. If the fucking if the if fucking uh, Daniel Harris had gotten that deal, we wouldn't yeah. have complained. No, we were like, oh, no. fuck it, whatever. Here, no, but have she's a billion in the same dollars. He's in the same position Daniel Harris was in the third one, though, where he is being accused of making the whole thing up and having killed everyone himself. Yeah, by a lot of people. He's like considered like they even reference O.J. Simpson, where he's like he's like the swamp's O.J. Like. Everyone knows he actually did it and that he's a liar. Yeah. But it, as we all know, as fans of the franchise, no. No. There's <laughs> a monster in the fucking swamp that kills people. Not not the least of which being like you look at like if you if you look at like what happened in those movies, there's no fucking way this guy did it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, there is no way he lifted up a dude and fucking impaled him with his own leg and I shit. know. Like yeah, how like... the fuck do you expect did he bring a forklift to the swamp? Like, yeah. <laughs> He's not like Batista bodybuilder guy. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like he's not gonna take like an old Miss Midwestern woman and just fucking rip the top of her head it's off. It's the same thing like, with Hatchet Three. You look at Daniel Harris. She's like five foot nothing and got like like zero muscles on her body. Do you really expect her to like? Yeah, rip yeah. The... You're like, how the hell? How does she rip a guy's jaw off? Is all I'm saying. Like, exactly. Did she use a jaw in life? Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, we do. Oh, and of course we do get beautiful cameo. From a boy, Tony Todd. Yes, he has got a nice cameo in <laughs> yeah, this. Yeah, he's got a nice cameo. He died in the second movie, but they managed yeah. to work him in in this movie. Because basically, the way Victor Crowley is bought, brought back in this movie, despite the fact that their attempt to defeat him worked in the third movie, mm -hmm. is uh, basically a group of 20-somethings um, have decided that they want to pitch to this guy a hatchet movie. A hatchet face movie based on Victor Crowley. Um, but they want to film a mock trailer in order to convince him and investors to make the movie. Yeah. Which, for all of you who don't, don't know, Hatchet was originally financed and made because of a fake trailer Adam Green made. So that's an in reference to the Hatchet, like, yeah. lore, <laughs> in, a, in a way. But some behind the scenes lore. Um, so these 20 somethings are trying to do that, but they want to film a scene in which they actually have someone recite the uh the curse lines that that brought Victor Crowley to life in the first place. Yeah, which I I think they don't did they bring that up in the second movie or That's the, the second movie. movie. That's okay. the second movie where they bring that up. Um and so but they don't know how to say the lines right, so they look up a bunch of YouTube videos of people reciting the curse because it's become a conspiratorial thing on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Whereas like is Victor Crowley real? The real story behind Victor Crowley. So there's a whole bunch of people in their basements doing like armchair like conversations <laughs> yeah, about yeah. Victor Crowley. Um, and, uh, like, much like real life and flat earthers and things like that. And, um, <laughs> it turns out Reverend Zombie has a YouTube yeah. channel <laughs> where he, where he recited the lines before he died. Like the yeah. actual curse of Victor Crowley, which makes sense because he, he, in the second one it's very clear. He understands the whole legend. Yeah. Um, but he's just wrong about how to fix it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He just, he just, he just <laughs> fucked up the details, yep. you know? But he got the curse right. Yeah, he got and the curse so right. And so when they play his curse... This brings Victor Crowley back from the dead. And, <laughs> and this he... is what we meant by is the Jason Lives of the yes. franchise. It's like, how does he come back? Uh, uh, voodoo curse. Voodoo. Said again, he rises. Yep. Fucking lightning bolt. Whatever. Who gives a shit? It's like, it's like Jason Lives meets Child's Play. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's just... Oh is. my! Oh no, you're right. It is. Child's Play was the one with the voodoo curse. You're like the, right. The super racist voodoo curse. Oh my franchise. god! Yeah, no. I I was. I love Child's Play, but yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. That's like Ugandan Knuckles. That shit's racist. Yes. I enjoy. I love it. Ugandan. Knuckles. Yeah, I love it. But <laughs> racist you know, is all fun. No, no one can tell me it's not racist. The moment you start clucking, yeah, yeah, that's, that's kind of racist. <laughs> but I love it. I find it hilarious as fuck because I'm an awful person. Anyway, the point is. <laughs> 
<laughs> the point is, um, uh, yeah, so he's brought back because of these stupid 20-somethings that decide to try to film a mock trailer in the swamp after hours when the tourists aren't there. Yeah. Um, and uh, they are some of our main characters combined with the... Uh, the crew who yeah, are the flying, crew who are flying Perry Shen's character in and all to, that to uh, do an interview, as well as this one uh, tour guide who wants to be an actor in the movie, so he's helping the twenty uh, something sneak onto the yeah onto the tour yeah, guide. Yeah, he's area. breaking the rules because they've offered him a part. In the yeah, film. and he he's a character who's introduced as like this really douchey wannabe oh, actor yeah. doing these shitty impressions, and you're like, oh god, this is gonna be like the annoying character, like the Jar Jar, you just want to die. But over the course of the movie. He became my favorite character. Yeah, yeah, no, he, he's great. <laughs> because the thing that becomes very clear about this character is you're like, okay, so he's a douche that no one likes, but more often than not, he's doing the right thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that was a really good twist. That was a really good he's decision. He's stupid, but he's usually doing the right thing. Yeah, yeah. He usually <laughs> he usually knows spot on what's going on, even though he's a complete moron about it. And he's it. the one who actually comes up with the idea that, that they use in the end to defeat Victor Crowley this time, but yeah. you can tell it's not going to stick this oh, time. Oh, no, it's not. No, because it, not. Considering what they had to do in the third one, there's no way this is going to end him. Exactly. <laughs> You know exactly, and if you're wondering, hey, is Daniel Harris in this one? Oh, she's in the after credits. <laughs> yeah, sequence. Just, just wait after the credits. You'll wait after the Daniel credits, Harris. she's there. Which is their tease for uh, Hatchet Five slash Victor Crowley Two, whatever they're gonna call it. Yeah, um, <laughs> dude, I can't wait. Oh, I can't fucking wait. Oh, I can't wait. Um, I, I'm super fucking excited. Some of the little like, there's so many like beautiful. This is such, dude. I don't know how to say it. If, if this is pandering, I feel officially pandered to. Oh, this I'm enjoying it. Uh, 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 this is the most fan service hatchet movie. I yet. everything I noticed was just absolutely delightful, right down to the fact that um Felissa Rose, when she dies, they stick something up her cooch because she played Angela in Sleepwood. Yes, yeah. who famously it turns out the twist is uh she's actually a boy that She's a chick with a dick. That their parents have been treating like a girl this whole time, and it's partially why she goes nuts. Yeah. <laughs> because her parents didn't let her identify the way she wanted to identify. Yeah. And speaking <laughs> of dick, uh, Gory, this one's for you. There is dong in this movie. There is. Flat out on the slab. Oh, man. They, they, they whip that shit out early. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That happens in like the There's first some like, early 10 dong. minutes. There's some early dong. Um, <laughs> I, I, give, I give this dong like a 2 out of 10. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. A little like, more balls than dong, if you know what I mean. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> but it is like, in this movie. Uh, you know. And, and looking at that shot, I'm going like, that's not fake either. That's, that's, that's <laughs> got to just be the guy's dick. I don't know if it's the actual actor, but it's definitely a stunt dong. Yeah, it's <laughs> definitely a dick. And if it's a, if that's special effects, hey, yo, bravo. Well, good job to special effects. It, it convinced me. It looked mm -hmm. real enough. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> this movie's so great. Um, oh, fucking... man. I don't think I've laughed at a horror comedy this much since fucking Piranha 3D. Oh, it definitely had, like, that. Like, it doesn't have the yeah. budget of Piranha 3D, where Piranha 3D was able to go, like, buck wild. We're gonna have millions and millions of people slaughtered, like, on screen. But, uh... This movie did a lot with what little it had. Oh my! Well, well I also like this. So, had... It's so it's such a contained fucking yes. movie. It's only got like three locations. But the thing that I consistently found myself going, I'm like, I'm not feeling that constraint. Yeah, yeah. And well, the funny thing is, is that the, the, that is the one part of the movie where the logic is a little broken, but it works because like you could see what they were trying to do with it. Yeah, because a huge chunk of this movie takes place in a crashed plane, and yeah. it's the plane that they were flying in uh, Perry Shen on, uh, which is like a private jet. Yeah, that, that crashes into the swamp. Yeah, it crashes into the swamp, and. Um, that's the one part where the logic kind of broke down because when like the twenty somethings were sitting there trying to like film their thing, I'm like, we would hear the plane if it was right above. Yeah, it. yeah, you hear. Them. <laughs> especially if it was gonna, especially if it was crashing and bodies were flying from it, you you would hear some shit up in the sky. Um, but yeah. that but that being said, like I was able to roll with that. But the other thing is that you kind of have to roll with the fact that the plane is flying over the swamp and not at like an airport. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> flying over the swamp, and when they hit, not everyone is instant. <laughs> Killed, because they have this whole like you know? excuse that they're going to do a water landing and then they're going to have him like boated in as part of the show. Yeah, <laughs> and but... they, they have a great cameo of Joe Lynch and Adam Green as the pilots. <laughs> yeah, 
Um, but you, you you can roll with that because I mean you've seen like these like reality TV show things where like they fly someone in and for some reason and he, it's like a water. Yeah, water. yeah, they have like a dramatic yeah. shot. So, so you're like, yeah, whatever. They do that on like Survivor all the time and shit. Like, yeah, so. yeah. It was it was it was a complete. You know what? Suspension of disbelief. Just roll with it. Yeah. Um, especially because fucking. Why well, I the, love. The I plane. thought the joke was worth it. I also thought the joke the, was worth I also it. thought the plane was great and like when the plane's crashing and everyone's dying in brutal and bloody ways as the plane's crashing before Victor Crowley even pops up yeah it was great yeah no it, w- it was and they fucking oh tiffany tiffany shep is also yeah. in this movie speaking of horror veterans yeah she like tiffany Sh- uh and she her oh geez she has that the, that's, death, the, that's the death that hits the most that. yeah that's the one you feel like yeah. everything else is is largely she, like she, she drowns comedy. because she's trapped in the plane while it's sinking so it's yeah. not like Victor Crowley does some sort of brutal death on her. And on top of that, you find out she's pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, it was, it was actually, it was really well scripted because you're sitting there going. I... That's the other thing. Probably the most well scripted of the half. Yeah. Yeah. It is because you're sitting there and you're at no point. Do you go that? Why are you doing this? Yeah. Yeah. You know, like that's something which is kind of a staple of slasher movies. Like, bitch, don't go in there. You know? But this one, you never had that question. Yeah. You always knew why this was happening. You also and... knew why they didn't get out of the plane and go get a tool because Victor Crowley's right outside. Yeah, it's like, we can't get the thing to save the person. We don't want to abandon her, so we can't all just leave. It's just yeah. huge that being said, that being said uh, uh, unfortunately, there is, like, if you're paying close attention to her, the thing that's holding her down wobbles when she moves a bit. Shh. <laughs> Movie magic. So, uh, a, l- a little bit of an effects fail there. Yeah, but, but sh- <laughs> it worked. Like you gotta, you have to really notice it. Well, you, 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 you also, like, like this is one of those planes where it has like the biggest windows I've ever seen on a plane. Well, yeah. So you get Kane <laughs> Hunter fucking bust yeah, through so them. Yeah. Through it. <laughs> You're like, okay, I'm willing to roll with this because that was a great shot. Yeah. So, that's yeah. the other thing. I think of the Hatchet movies, this has some of the best cinematography of it. It does. They get yeah. really colorful. They have like like the sh- shots where it's all like in red, and they have like greens and stuff. It's really pretty. Yeah. They the the lighting on the movie was really well done and it, I, and it, I couldn't, it told the story and i couldn't yeah. tell like hatchet one and two you can tell that majority of the movie were shot on like these sound stages with a bunch of foliage brought in yeah and this movie i couldn't tell if it was an actual swamp or if it was a sound stage half the time yeah yeah you're, yeah it was like it would have been more logical to use a sound sound stage but the, but the but at but at the same time you found yourself going i don't know if they built this in the middle of the built the airplane set in the oh the exterior. Well, of the plane they obviously the built the swamp. airplane set, but the, the, but the, the actual swamp I couldn't tell. Yeah, yeah, the actual. Exterior and usually shots, I could tell yeah. in the first three movies when it was swamp and when it was set. <laughs> oh yeah, well it was super obvious because it has the perfect lighting. Yeah, you know. <laughs> And all that shit, but like, and they'll always yeah, be like that. Tell. That one plant doesn't look like something that's in Louisiana. Like that's, yeah. that looks like a California yeah. plant. Well, how, how to put it? Like, if you were like, man, that that don't look like li- no fucking Louisiana swamp. Or, no, they or, actually, ha- or like, went like there. Hatchet one and two, more so than three, because three they actually went out and filmed in an actual forest slash, slash yeah. swamp. Um, for most of that movie, but in Hatchet One and Two, th- there's a lot of like trees covered in that like moss you get a Halloween Spanish stores. moss, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you can tell it's like you can just get that at a Halloween store, and it looks exactly like that. Yeah, <laughs> but just probably what it is. Yeah, you know. And uh, but no, I, 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 all the little touches. It's great. We're great. It's awesome. It's so, you know, it's super bloody. Like I, I, I can't say it's bloodier oh, than the other ones because the other ones are all bloody. Well, but it's oh man, they fuck. turned up the pr- they turned up the PSI on the blood hose oh, though. God, fucking oh my lots fucking of sprays, God. lots of sprays in this. It's Anytime fucking... you can have multiple blood sprays coming out of the same body, they did it. Yeah. Oh God, <laughs> the Hatchet is the franchise that probably has the most decapitations out of any horror franchise I've Woo! ever seen, but it never gets old. No, the new ways they figure out to decapitate someone each time is yeah. great. Oh, and y'all might be wondering, but wait, Victor Crowley, it's a Victor Crowley movie. Does he have, does old Belt Sander, does old Sandy come Belt back? Belt Sander comes back. Belt Sander comes back. Totally comes back. <laughs> There's a whole fucking, like, fan service like, exchange about it leading up to it, too. It's yeah. a great build up. Why is he going to get a Belt Sander in the middle of nowhere? <laughs> Guy guy walks into a fucking like shed as part of the tourist thing where they have all his weapons on display. Yeah, one of them's the bell tourists. sander. And you're just like, oops. Oops. <laughs> Derp. 
Oh, I love that one scene that, that was actually a really great, nicely done, even though it was super telegraphed. It really worked for me where they had like the motion sensor light. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> and they're just standing by the window as the lights constantly going off because of like bugs and shit. And then like by the third one, he, he comes well, smashing they, through. They, he, it was, it was really well done because you, you know, what's coming. You know what's coming. You know where to look. You know what's going to happen. And it was still effective. Yeah. It still worked. You're still like, oh, Jesus. Because rather than just have him stand there, it's Kane Hodder running at you full yes. speed. And Which is, it, that's what separates Hatchet shit. from other slashers. In yeah. most slashers, he would just be standing there looking creepy. But Hatchet's not that. No. Hatchet is, he barrels at you like a fucking bear and yeah. mauls you. <laughs> <laughs> just, that fucking the other that, thing I love is like, that they shit. didn't do what the third movie did because one of the things I don't like about the third movie is that they just like layered in all the, these stock animal bear sounds when he roars. And oh shit. yeah, that was a little weird. Whereas in yeah. this one, it actually he sounded like Victor Crowley again. Yeah, where he's like making like like the Kane Hodder roars and shit. Like yeah, that. yeah, that felt way that felt way more natural. <laughs> that felt way better. You know, I I fucking love this. I. Adam, I want to. See Adam Green, I'll see Victor Crowley two slash Hatchet five. Oh, yeah. oh my I god! I hope you make it. I hope uh, you make it. Fund that on. However, get a dentist to give you ten million dollars. Put the rest on Kickstarter. I don't fuck care. I'll see that movie. I, 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 and I want to see Danny. I want to see Danny Harris come back. Uh, yeah, for real. Yeah. Oh my that god! That teaser at the end. Oh my oh, god! That man. was that was. That was mean. That got me pumped. Yeah. I was so hyped, but I was like, oh, yeah, you son of a bitch. Now I really want to see you the You fucking next Marvel one. teased me, man. Oh, you my God. Marvel yeah, teased no, totally. Me. Totally. <laughs> um, oh. So, yeah, um, Hatchet 4 slash Victor Crowley gets uh, 50 thumbs up from me. Um, it is one of the best of, of the franchise. So, if you're a Hatchet fan, it's a must see. Yeah. If you're not a Hatchet fan, this movie might convert you. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Real good. So uh, be sure to check it out. As once again, I'm going to include an Amazon affiliate link in the description below to the movie. So you can watch it immediately after this video. And I highly recommend you do. And uh, with that all said, where, they, where can they find you, Camp Dracula? All right. You can find me at Count underscore Dracula on Twitter. And we stream on YouTube every Thursday and Sunday. Thursdays at 6 p.m. and Sundays at 9 p.m. And that's Pacific Standard Time mm -hmm. right here on YouTube. And if you want to see me play, like, really weird video games that I just happen to love, some of which are horror themes, some of them are just weird shit. I'm currently playing Persona 5, for example. You could follow me on Twitch. And all you have to do is look for me as Count Jacula. And once you see the neon goat head, you know, it's your boy. Hell yeah. You can also find me on Twitter at the horror guru, and you can find me on Facebook uh, under the Blood Splattered Cinema page. And you can find me on Twitch playing Friday the 13th, PUBG, and a bunch of other games um, under the horror guru. I'm very easy to find because it's the same name almost everywhere. Yep. With that said, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to ring that notification bell so that you're notified of my videos immediately upon their upload. And as per usual, my fellow gorehounds, peace out. And I'll catch y'all later.